Hey folks, what's up? This is Adam here, I can't see the guy. We're on the move all today to review something slightly different. Um, I got one um, comment on one of my old, older videos. I mean, I've been doing movie reviews now for years now. And surprisingly enough, one review, one comment I got back in the year of 2014, 15, I did a review on one of my old reviews. And someone asked me to do an update review on this particular film. And it's one of the films made by Full Moon. And Full Moon, as you all know, is the low budget movies of horror and some other films. And the one that got the um, the comment on was this movie right here. I do own this on Blu ray, even though I'm not I'm like a major fan of it. I still own it on Blu ray, and I'm glad that I still own it. It's, um, like I say, with um, Full Moon. But it's not my favourite Full Moon movie. It's not one of the biggest movies that I'm a major fan of. It's this movie right here Dollman. Okay. Um, Dollman, like I said, I'm going on Blu ray. I've got no problems with Dollman. I'm just not the die hard Dollman fanatic. There's another film that I like more than Dollman that's made by Full Moon. And it's this movie right here. Many of you are going to laugh your ass off at this because this is the Full Moon movie that most people dislike. But it's this one right here Demonic Toys. I'm a Demonic Toys fan. And really, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with being different, everybody. Some people are going to agree with my choices, some people aren't. You know, we're all different. We've got different tastes in different films and all that. I mean, people praise this movie, Dollman, because it stars um, Tim Thomason, who's in the trances. And he plays Brick Brado, the, uh, the cop from outer space with the most powerful school in the universe. Some people say this was one of the best, um, if not the best full moon movie. You know, but I disagree. I think the best full moon movie is the one that everyone hates. Demonic Toys. <laughs> it's strange, you know, but we're all different with different tastes. I like the idea more about killer toys coming to life and causing chaos in a toy warehouse. I like that idea more than a cop from outer space with a gun that's powerful in the universe. I like the other story better. But anyhow, I saw this um, doll man once on DVD. And uh, I was fine with the movie. It's not a terrible movie. It's not a great movie either, in my opinion. Uh, Tim Thomason, who was in the trances, um, he did a fine job of his role in this movie. I didn't mind him too much. He wasn't an annoying character. He wasn't a dull character. But you could tell he was into his role in this movie with his one-liners. You know, at one stage he calls a kid fat in the laundry room. You know, where they're all held hostage. That's right, fat boy. And several of her um, catchphrases are used throughout the film. I've seen this movie a couple of times. Um, I mean, this is the Blu-ray version. Like I already said, this is like a two-sided um, cover. It's got like more of like a modern cover on the inside. But I like the, um, the old look cover. I like to keep the old memories alive. Um, it contains a booklet. And obviously, there's the disc to Dollman. I mean, special features wise, it's got HG transfer in uh, aspect ratio. Um, there's two soundtracks, the and there's the original video zone, the trailer in HD, Charles Bannon, Tim Thomason um, video cast, that's in HD as well. Uh, the booklet notes, which I've already mentioned, by um, Callum Waddle. And. Um, Several other features that some other people or diehard Dollman fans may enjoy. Well, I've already got into the intro about what I think's better, Dollman or Demonic Toys. I like Demonic Toys more. I'm the Demonic Toys fan. Hence why I'm not a big fan of the crossover that Full Moon made, Dollman vs. Demonic Toys. Not just because Demonic Toys lost, but for a crossover movie, it was pretty poor. And I'll get back to that in the latest review. But this is just purely on the film Dollman. I know people who love this movie. Um, some of my friends like this movie. Some people thought it was a flash in the pan of fucking forgettable. I mean, basically, it's about this planet far away from Earth. Uh, Tim Thomason plays this cop by the name of Brick Bardo. And he's got the most powerful school in the universe. Hence, when he shoots people, they're blown to fucking pieces like in explosions. Explosions of blood and guts and their organs just fly everywhere. You know, the most powerful is like laser gun in the planet. 
The film opens up. He's um, doing his job as a cop. He goes to a laundry room where these overweight women were with their kids and they're all being held hostage. Brick Barnes got his way of catching the criminals. You know, he's doing his laundry. And he shoots through one person, injuring the other. And he manages to complete a crime yet again. But yet yeah, he, calls a fat, he calls a kid fat for some strange reason. Hence why he's still the good guy. But you're thinking, you know, what kind of a cop calls a kid fat? <laughs> but he did. But anyway, there's a scene where Brick Bardo gets captured. And he's took to his um, main nemesis. I forgot, I remember the name, I can't remember his name, his name, but there's like nothing left of his body, he's like a floating head. I mean, this movie's low budget, you can tell it's low budget, but I do give props to one thing about this movie, they did do their job with um, with the budget they had. I mean, the head is like a floating puppet, like on a string, you can tell, you know. the um, I thought they did fine effect wise when it came to the fucking um, blowing apart scenes with the laser gun. Well, anyhow, um, one thing leads to another, and um, Brick Bardo kills off a few bad guys. He uses his gun. One little move I did like about Brick Bardo's character is that the gun can automatically go in his hand, like this little laser on his hand. And um, for example, if the gun is too far away, he can make it hypnotize in his hand, like, you know, the gun goes right into his hand when he wants it most. I mean, he blasts all these bad guys with this powerful gun in the universe, exploding all their bodies to pieces. I mean, he does that to one bad guy just before he teleports to Earth. Um, there's just his head left. All his organs are all over the place. He's literally, you know, melting away. So, gore-wise, it's all there. And they did a fine job of it, considering the low budget that they had. When well, anyhow, he chases his um, nemesis to the planet Earth. Now, what's unique about Brick Bardo's character is, on planet Earth, he's still the same in every way. However, he is now... 13 inches. That's why on the front cover it says there. Um, 13 inches with an attitude. So he's still a cop. He's still a good guy. Nothing changes about his character other than he's 13 inches. And what's so unique about his gun in this is that on his home planet he can blow people to fucking pieces. Where now he's on planet Earth, his gun still remains the most powerful gun. However, it doesn't blow people to pieces on planet Earth. For example, if he shoots it at you... It may blow an arm off or a leg off or a certain part of the body, but leave these big burning bloody marks, basically. Well, anyway, he lands on planet Earth in New York City. And in this particular area where he lands, he's trying to search down his nemesis, but he's nowhere to be seen. And there's crime taking place on the planet Earth in this particular area in uh, New York. And one of these gang leaders, played by Jackie Earl Haley, who I'm not a big fan of. I don't hate the guy, but... I wasn't so impressed that he took over Freddy Krueger in the new Nightmare on Elm Street film. But he's also been in other good movies like The Watchmen and other things like that. I mean, now we can call Brick Bardo Dollman because of his size. And his ship is the same size as well. And um, it introduces new characters like this um, mother and a son. We reveal that her husband got killed because he was a gang criminal and all that kind of shit. So we do introduce long characters along the way. And um, Brick Barner feels it's his responsibility to look after this um, mother and her son from the crime. Because he still thinks he's a cop and all that kind of stuff. There's a few comedy points staying at where the point where the kid wants to um, show and tell the doll man and his ship to all his friends and all that kind of shit. And Brick Barner is like, get away from me. This ship is not a toy. You know, shit like that. And you can, and it looks like a toy. Graphic-wise, due to the low budget, it looks like a little toy model. Until they do some serious cam camera work on what it actually looks like in the movie. You know, if you get what I mean. Meanwhile, Brick Bottom's nemesis is found by um, Jackie Earl Haley. Jackie Earl Haley's character. And um, like I say, all these crimes are taking place. And at one point, Jackie Earl Haley kills off the nemesis by squashing him with his hand. And of course, when he moves his hand away, all it remains is a squashed head, you know, with all the brain oozing and thumping and like a bloody gory mess. So I think that's what they spent most of the money on in this movie, the choice of gore and certain, um, you know, graphic camera effects and things like that. So you get Jackie Earl Haley looking like the hero for once. He kills um, Brick Bardo's um, main nemesis, who's trying to kill him. 
would have been made more sense if Britain Broder killed him off at some point during the movie, but that doesn't happen. I mean, the last half of this movie, I wouldn't say it's like a die-hard action ending. I mean, you couldn't do that for the budget that this movie had, but still with what they had, they did the best. I mean, you had criminals being killed here, left, right and centre with Brick Barter with his gun, you know, shooting at all these different people, blowing parts of the bodies off and all that. Shaquille Haley gets his comeuppance. And uh, not really much happened after that other than the credits roll. Because in the credit roll, they took up a lot of time. It kind of reminded me a lot of the movie of what I previously removed, um, reviewed. Um, I can't think what movie it was, but the credits were very long. I just remember the credits being very long in this movie. I mean, this movie, altogether, it's on for, um, let's see, 79 minutes. Well, the majority of that time was took up by end credits. You know, it shows the sequence of the different characters, for example, Brick Bardo in the laundry scene, and then you've got the cast name next to it. Brick Bardo played by Tim Thomason, you know, with him in the laundry room. Then it goes to introduce the other characters in this movie, like certain pictures and videos of video clips of them throughout the film. Jackie O'Haley as Braxton Red, Kamala Lopez Dawson as Debbie, you know, Nicholas Guest as Skyresh. Yeah, you know, those sort of all those sort of topic characters. So the ending credits did take up a lot, a lot of time. They usually do that for low budget horror movies, and I never particularly know why. I mean, overall, this movie was mediocre. I wasn't like pumped up about the movie while I watched it, but um, I still wanted to own it anyway as part of my full moon collection. There's loads of full moon movies out there, but it was given an 18 rating also for its severe violence and gore, like that. So. I like the look as well for the for the whole gore for the whole gore sequences, and I thought they did a good job of it, you know, budget wise. Um, it was made in the year of nineteen ninety one, so just after the eighties, and I love movies that try to go overboard with the fucking gore and all the violent sequences from those years. You can't beat the eighties and the nineties, in my opinion. I mean, as years go by, they seem to get really easy making these core sequences but um, for the budget they had they did a good job for a 1991 movie again I had no problem with Tim Thomason's performance in this movie I thought he did a fine job there were a few other actors which I thought could have done a better job of their roles like the mother and the son I mean you're not expecting Oscar nominated actors in this movie not for a low budget full moon movie but one thing I'm a little bit surprised that is that this film did not get really a bad rating yeah films like demonic toys and all those other full moon movies got low ratings yet they had sequels take um, demonic toys for example they made one called bad channels and demonic toys 2 and all that kind of stuff they even had a crossover but demonic toys had two crossovers one with doll man and one with the puppet master the puppet master like had 10 movies whereas of doll man who got one of the highest scores did not have any sequels. They did not make a Dollman 2. I mean, yeah, the, the, the Brick Body character was mentioned in comics and certain other movies and different movie materials. Like, but then they never made an actual sequel of this movie. So that's always puzzled me. Uh, but again, if you love this movie, Dollman, and you're a big fan of um, Tim Thomason, then great. Um, like I say, he was in the transfers as he was in the transfers, and he's been in other movies as well. Definitely give them a try out. I wouldn't mind seeing Tim Thomas in other films, because like I say, I don't think he's a bad actor. But I may remember him from this movie, but this is not my favourite full moon movie, Demonic Toys is. But um, still along the way, I'm glad that this is part of my full moon collection. Um, not a bad movie. Um, but at the same time, I do give it props for the best that they did, for the budget that they had. They did do the best. I'd take my hats off to that. I can easily tell if a movie's been careless or doing the best for what they had money-wise. So. All right, everyone, that's my um, movie review. I'll see if I can um, note anything else. Um, the exact release date was November, November 27th of 1991, distrib distributed by Paramount Home Video. The Obviously, Full Moon Entertainment is the production company. Uh, directed by Albert Pin. 
and written by Charles Band. That's right. Yeah, that's pretty much it, everyone. I'd really appreciate it if you left me some comments about this movie. Um, are you one of the Doorman fans? Do you like other demonic toys? Is it one of your favourite Full Moon movies? I'm really interested to know what you what you think about this movie, everybody. I'm always eager to hear everybody's opinions and their thoughts about this particular film, or for any film made by Full Moon for that matter. Really want your feedback, everyone. Please leave it in the comment section below. Form this video up, form it down, do what you're going to do. And um, hopefully we'll get some good conversations going about this particular movie. Thanks, everyone. Peace out.